Good morning, my name is Dimitris Kiridis. I'm a professor of international politics at Pandion University in Athens, Greece, and I'm a proud graduate of the Fletcher School, both a MOD and a PhD uh, back in the 90s. I'm here with the Minister of National Defense of Greece, Mr. Dimitris Avramopoulos, a seasoned Greek politician uh, who is here to deliver a keynote address later today on Greece's new geostrategic role. We have a few questions for you and for our uh, uh, audience here at the Fletcher School. My first has to do with the big news, the headline news, the last three, four years, which has been the Greek crisis. What are the causes for this calamity and if we are anywhere near its end? First of all, it's not a calamity yet. Hopefully it's not going to be a calamity. But it is true to say that uh, Greece did not realize from the very beginning the need to proceed in deep structural reforms before and after joining uh, the Eurozone. But as uh, you know very well, the crisis is not only Greek, it's European, it is uh, global. It started in the year 2008 uh, in the United States and was spread uh, around. At that moment, it is true to say that we should have taken all necessary measures and uh, we were reluctant to do so. Now we are in front of uh, a very responsible policy that we have adopted that we believe that very soon Greece will be the very first country to get out of the crisis and pave the way for a more auspicious future, not only for the Eurozone but for the global uh, economy. But it needs hard work, national and political unity, social cohesion and our determination to deliver. And we are committed towards our lenders, towards the European Union, and all international institutions to deliver, and we have started doing so. Now, on top of the Eurozone crisis, we have crises all over the uh, region, Greece's region. Eastern Mediterranean seems to be up in flames, in Syria, in Egypt. Where do you see Greece's role in this new geostrategic environment? Regardless uh, of the economic crisis, uh, Greece remains one of the most stable and stabilizing factor in the region. Actually, this will be the main topic of my presentation of my lecture today. Um, and uh, we should never neglect the fact that uh, Greece, in this very, very sensitive um, uh, part of the world, uh, r remains playing a very important positive uh, role. As you know, Greece is uh, uh, possessing one of the most uh, capable defense systems in Europe. This has been put, put at the service uh, of uh, our common causes. Greece is a peace-loving, a peacemaking country. We are historical interlocutors of all neighboring uh, nations since the last 2,500 years, <laughs> and we speak the same language. So, um, whatever is happening there uh, provides Greece with a new uh, role. We give priority to providing our allies, the United States of America, NATO, international institutions, uh, UN, uh, NATO, with our support, uh, our, um, let's say, uh, dynamic and positive uh, uh, support to whatever has to do in making uh, this part of Europe a uh, neighborhood of stability, uh, peace, uh, cooperation. One final question in regards to Europe. You are a European politician. <coughs> Euro elections are uh, coming up in May 2014. Many people are afraid about the outcome and the rise of populism and extremism in Europe. Are you optimistic about the future of Europe? You know, the worst uh, mix in uh, politics uh, is uh, a mix of uh, nationalism and populism. This is a phenomenon that characterizes especially Southeastern Europe, the Balkans. I always say that it's the moment for us to debalkanize uh, the Balkans, but it has a direct effect on, uh, uh, on Europe uh, itself. Europe um, is crossing difficult moments. I believe that in Europe we made a mistake. First, we had uh, uh, to complete uh, our main target, which was uh, the political unification of Europe, and then proceed uh, to the economic union. We did exactly uh, the opposite. If uh, uh, we had proceeded in making Europe a more federal state, let's take uh, United States as an example, even the crisis would have been confronted in a more uh, efficient uh, way. Now we are in front of making a big decision and I believe that there, there's only one way, a breakthrough policy by unifying politically Europe. Otherwise, we are going to see Europe 
being dismantled. In the main target that we have, we all have to serve this moment, is to make Europe a more united, a more cohesive, politically, federal system. And this will be the beginning of a new era for our common European march. Thank you very much, and thanks the Fletcher School. Thank you. Thank you very much for your hospitality.